Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Monday, January 16th, 2012, and I'm Darko. This is my website, ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. I just uh, put up a new poll. I let the old one just kind of sit up there for a while. It says here, do you believe there will be a military conflict with Iran this year? There's been a lot of hoopla, and like I've mentioned before, I, when I was in school and what graduated in 2008, that last year, everybody thought there was going to be a war with Iran and that. And uh, here we are four years later, and it's still no war. So you can uh, follow GGN by putting in your email address there. Uh, you can help me out with the donate button there. I put all the news that I've uh, posted on GGN right over there as well. Also on YouTube, uh, if you'd like to visit my channel, it's ddarko2012. There's uh, plenty of videos up there for you to choose from. So as uh, this standoff with Iran continues, uh, there's... Some people think it could be just about oil prices and, of course, increasing uh, the value of the dollar. And so we have this article from Zero Hedge. Are the Middle East wars really about forcing the world into dollars and private central banking? It says here the Middle Eastern and North African wars planned 20 years ago don't necessarily have to do with fighting terrorism. See this and this and this. You can go on there see the general talking about it, um, all the countries. Uh, basically one after another. It says here, they are in reality about oil and protecting Israel. And read the section entitled, Securing the Realm Here. So you got all kinds of links there. Oh yeah, in YouTube's video description, there'll be all these links for these uh, headlines and links, so check that out. But as AFP reports today, there is another major motivation for the expanding wars. The latest round of American sanctions are aimed at shutting down Iran's central bank. A senior U.S. official said Thursday, spelling out that intention directly uh, for the first time, quote, we do need to close down the central bank of Iran, uh, the official told reporters on condition of anonymity, of course, while adding that the United States is moving quickly to implement the sanctions signed into law last month. And I'll cover that as well. Obama is pushing uh, further. Finishing up with this article, foreign central banks that deal with Iranian central bank on oil transactions could also face similar restrictions un under the new law, which has sparked fears of damage to U.S. ties with nations like Russia and China. Quote, if a correspondent bank of a U.S. bank wants uh, to do business with us and they're doing business with the CBI or other designated Iranian banks, then they're going to get in trouble with us, said a U.S. official. So why is the U.S. Uh, targeting Iran's central bank? Well, multi-billionaire Hugo Salinas Price told King World News that what happened to Mr. Gaddafi, many speculate the real reason he was ousted was that he was planning an all-African currency for conducting trade. The same thing happened to him that happened to Saddam because the, they, or the U.S., does not want any solid competing currency out there versus the dollar. You know Gaddafi was talking about the gold diner. So this is an interesting article, so I'll keep going here and then I'll move on. But it goes on here and it says that uh, what are these seven countries, the ones that I was mentioning earlier, which are what? Uh, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and Iran. And the article asks the question, what do these seven countries have in common? Well, in the context of banking, one that sticks out is that none of these is listed among the 56 member banks ooh, of the Bank of International Settlements. That evidently puts them outside the long regulatory arm of the central banker's central bank in Switzerland. China outrage as U.S. imposes sanctions on a Chinese oil company. On Thursday, U.S. imposed sanctions on China's state-run um, corporation. It's the largest supplier of refined petroleum products to Iran. And it says here, the sanctions blocked uh, the company from doing certain business with the United States. And on the foreign ministry website, the Chinese regime is quoted as saying, it was totally unreasonable. It comes after the U.S. Treasury Secretary Timothy Geithner failed to convince Chinese leaders to support tougher economic sanctions on Iran. China is the largest consumer of Iranian oil and has opposed recent efforts to pressure Iran to end its nuclear program. Oil climbs from four-week low as Iran warns of Hormuz supply disruption, so... Uh, there you go, the oil and the central banking. Obama seeks new power to merge agencies, uh, pledges some action with or without Congress. President, oh, it's kind of ironic, too, that what, that uh, those drills, those exercises have been uh, pushed back now, right? Now that the oil has climbed us, the dollar says here, uh, Barack Obama wants more power to reorganize the executive branch uh, powers, he says, will only be used and making government more efficient. This is the same sort of authority that every business owner has to make sure that his or her company keeps pace with the times. When he says that he's, you know, he's saying it uh, literally. It's it's a corporation. He's 
the CEO of the corporation in the United States. So when he uses that word, he's not just, you know, uh, using an analogy or something. He's just speaking uh, plainly. If you have, you know, eye, eyes and ears, you have ears to listen and eyes to see, as the Masons say. And much like other um, actions that uh, whatever his name is has taken in the past, so with or without Congress, I'm going to keep at it. And he keeps using the word leaner uh, scattered uh, throughout his quotes. And, um, you know, well, what is leaner? Well, you know, he represents, as the CEO of the Corporation of the United States, the military-industrial complex, so the, 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 um, the army of the world, the global police force. So those things aren't going to go away. I mean, and they're actually converting it to drones, so less humans. And, of course, with less humans, you got less. You don't have to pay the, uh, the drones, uh, you know, a wage and stuff like that and benefits, like health benefits. And he goes in there and says better service. Um, well, what better service? No, they're going to cut programs. That's the leaner form of government. They're still going to have the bat to hit you over the head with if you don't pay your taxes, but you're not going to have anything in return for it, and you're going to work until you're drop dead. The U.S. debt ceiling feeder is back. Think the issue is on autopilot? Think again. I'll finish up with this and move on. And as The Hill reported yesterday, Obama is expected to request that Congress allow the incremental and final $1.2 trillion debt expansion of the $2.1 trillion total within a few days. Regime change express surges towards Buda Budapest, Hungary. Says here, poor Tomas Falegi, Hungary's envoy to the IMF, had to spend last week enduring endless lectures on democracy and fiscal responsibility from the unelected head of an international financial organization that is largely funded with money stolen from the United States taxpayer. And much like a lot of these uh, post-Soviet bloc countries, that's what they call them, uh, they were fighting them off. They were fighting out the communists and the Soviets. And then once they did that, it says uh, now as Hungary's prime minister, uh, he is fighting against an unelected Brussels and Washington-based force that seeks to steal whatever is left of his country's sovereignty and ruin its economy for ideological reasons. Calling it financial terrorism, which is what it really is. Wall Street's rating agencies degrade or downgrade nine European countries. Then we have this, S&P downgrades EU credit ratings. It says here, S&P has downgraded the credit ratings of France, Italy, and Spain as the European debt crisis continues to intensify. Then we have Fitch Credit Agency warns of cataclysmic euro collapse. And of course, they do this because they want the IMF to be able to give them loans. So this is kind of like their little PR arm. But they do more than just PR. They actually... Uh, you know, they hinder people's or countries or corporations' ability to uh, keep borrowing and borrowing and borrowing their way out, which they can never actually do. The European Central Bank should ramp up its buying of troubled Eurozone debt to support Italy and prevent a cataclysmic collapse of the euro. So goes on there says the end of the euro would be cataclysmic well no it wouldn't people would actually prosper so and I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of people that are living in the european union that would agree with me on that fitch cuts russia outlook says fitch ratings on monday cut the outlook on russia's debt on political grounds one of the first clear repercussions of the recent election turmoil on russia's financial and economic outlook and i don't know i guess there could be uh, some legit legitimacy to this uh, downgrading, but I think it has more to do with punishing them like they are uh, China and dealing with Iran. So the uh, head of the financial global government or the head of the global government's financial arm, the IMF official, warned, i.e. threatened the Eurozone uh, that they face a downward spiral if it fails to get its governance, which doesn't mean government, it means a dictatorship governance in order. So it's interesting. I just used the word threaten. <laughs> Look at this. EU threatens Hungary over refusal to implement austerity policies and authoritarian new constitution. The EU has stepped up pressure on Hungary over the country's refusal to implement austerity policies and threaten legal action over its new constitution, which asserts political control over the central bank. Ooh, here we go again. Central bank. Rights group warns of slide towards authority authoritarianism, which is a bunch of BS because we just covered how <laughs> the the global government and all the little factions are authoritarian, right? Uh, they just call it governance. EU demands austerity measures. Oh, yeah, and they're all unelected. Let's just put it that way too, right? They're unelected turd bags. EU demands austerity measures before a new bailout. Okay, then we have this. Prime Minister warns violence could destabilize Romania. And this is what we saw in the video, uh, but it's based off a health care law, uh, and they said that they're actually going to redraft it because of this.
The Prime Minister urged Romanians to understand that tough austerity measures were needed to avoid default. Quote, we understand the hardships Romanians are facing. The crisis has been harsher than we imagined. He's so here you go. Here's a good example of this little shuffle or this game or this scam. In 2009, Romania took a two-year euro $20 billion, uh, loan from the IMF, the European Union, and the World Bank as the economy shrank by 7.1%. It imposed harsh austerity measures under the agreement, reducing public wages by 25% and increasing taxes. So this is interesting. This is what happens everywhere. It's the template. Uh, authorities urge peaceful protesters to distance themselves from troublemakers at future marches, which, well, who are those troublemakers a lot of times? Well, they're usually police. They're actually the governments themselves, and they'll be uh, infiltrating groups and stuff like that. Uh, and that's why I said they're turd bags. So it says here, protests in Hungary, Romania, you can go in there and check that out and keep moving. Europe anti-austerity rallies turn ugly, and it's not just in Romania and Hungary, but in Spain, Greece, and and other uh, countries as well, corporations. Europe's $39 trillion pension risk rose as economy faltered. State-funded pension obligations in 19 of the European Union na nations sorry, were about five times higher than their combined gross debt, according to a study commissioned by the European Central Bank. So it goes in there and blames the Great Recession where, you know, a uh, few hands made a lot of money and a lot of people lost their jobs and wealth was siphoned off and then they go in there and say oh it's the old people the aging population so you know what that means that means uh, this is financial warfare which turns into eugenics i.e. letting people die off uh, observer analysis banks overwhelmingly support Romney so there you go um, there's possibly the future president of the corporation the United States because most people, are, they're not going to vote for Ron Paul. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. I don't know if it'll actually change anything. But, uh, yeah, there you go. And then you have um, the other individual who dropped out, John Huntsman, who I believe was, what, Trilateral Commission or something like that, uh, throwing in his, uh, what do you call it, recommendation for Mitt Romney. Now, I've covered and reported on this before about in Britain where people are actually having to choose between eating, i.e. starving, or freezing. We have angry customers are abusing staff. Oh, they're abusing staff over rising prices amidst boss of British gas. Now, utility prices have just gone up everywhere. So it's not just in Britain, it's everywhere. Just like the crackdown on the Occupy movement, just unilaterally everywhere at the same time. Oh, I think it was even the same day. Angry British gas customers. That's how you know that we're living in a global government here. <laughs> the wholesale price of gas has fallen 9.4 percent and they refuse to pass on the fall in the wholesale price of gas to its 9.2 million gas customers. So this is class warfare. Tensions rise between rich and poor, increasing at their most intense level in nearly a quarter century. A new survey showed child labor for Victoria's Secret Cotton examined by the United States, then heavy-handed, here we go again, heavy-handed tactics as boys' late book sparks debt chase. It's like in the United States where they're arresting people. Library calls and international debt collectors over a uh, five-day uh, late that's a leaner government. CVS agrees to pay $5 million to settle investigation that they were overpricing everything for old, old people and disabled people. Lawsuits, uh, says Walgreens, Par Pharma overcharged its customers. This is good, fair justice. Former Dow chemical scientist gets five years in prison for stealing trade secrets from Dow, selling them to China. And MF Global may not be able to pay back the clients. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.